Good morning. Welcome to another week and Market Day Report. So glad you're joining us this morning on Veterans Day. Let's look and see how the markets have been moving in the overnight session. We'll start with the corn market now and a little lower on the trade. December at 429 and three quarters, down a penny and a quarter. Penny three quarters lower on the first 2025 contract, the March contract, but again, still part of what we would consider the old crop, part of what we've harvested already at 442 and a half. What about soybeans in the overnight session? Well, we've watched a rally with November up nine, 1025 and three quarters, January four and three quarter cents higher. 1035 on a market that's rallied 3.8% week over week. Now to the wheat markets and double digit losses. July Chicago down 12 at 593 a bushel. Hard red July 585 and three quarters down nine and three quarters. And Minneapolis front month D's at 589 and a quarter down eight and a half. Cotton market in New York, 7048 on the December, lost a half a penny with March down 59, 7266. All right, let's go to Springfield, Missouri. That's where we find the president, Midwest Market Solutions, Brian Hoops. Brian, what are you watching this morning? Hey, good morning, Tony. Hope everyone had a great weekend and happy Veterans Day out there. Very uh, important holiday in our nation's history, of course. And we look at, you know, we do have normal trading hours today, normal trade overnight. Just the changes will be their government offices are closed, banks are closed. So you don't have to worry about those margin calls today. Uh, no crop progress report this afternoon. There won't be export inspections today. And since the government's closed, there wasn't any private export sale announcements. Those will be delayed until, you know, tomorrow if there is any. So what we saw overnight was kind of a lack of follow through in both the corn and the soybeans. Soybeans did try and rally and they could not take out Friday's highs. So they're settling middle of the range. The corn market never really tried to rally. Wheat, in fact, took out Friday's lows and uh, continued to push lower on good growing conditions here here in the U.S., improving conditions, in fact, plus um, lack of really any strong export business. Now, one of the keys that you, when you have a big report like we did on Friday, one of the keys going forward is can you get follow through on that? Will, will, is there enough buying momentum to push us higher? And so far there hasn't been in corn and soybeans. So corn charts look like a potential double top on the 434 area that needs to be negated. We need to take out Friday's highs in the soybeans to continue to push higher. Uh, if we don't, if we kind of just trade this middle of the range, then it looks like a consolidation day, an inside trading day, which tends to tell us that the, the trend is starting to end. Meanwhile, if you take out the lows like we did, that's certainly going to be technically bearish. And so I think it's worth pointing out that a lot of times the oat market is one that they talk about knows where the grain market goes in here. It's dropped 65 cents in the last week. Maybe it's telling us that markets are, are getting close to that uh, figure. Plus, we see the um, what's happening with uh, weather in South America looks really good. You know, in fact, last year it was better than last year's because Argentina was so dry. But when we saw uh, last year's time frame about this, it, November 15th or so, grain markets turned and went lower going into the end of the year on just on good growing conditions in, in Brazil. And that's what we see again this year. Very good rains for both Brazil, for Argentina. The planting progress pace is now above average. So things are look real good down south. They look to have a really big crop coming on. So even if you get these rallies in here, maybe you've made old crop sales, don't forget to look at new crop opportunities as well. Hey Brian, uh, again coming off of last week, what a what a busy week with a lot of news, a lot of things happening. So maybe today being a little quieter might be okay. Speaking of quiet, I'll be quiet for a moment. We'll take a break. Come back and talk livestock futures. Market Day report continues in a moment. Welcome back to Market Day report and Happy Veterans Day. And if you've served, thank you for your service. All right, let's jump into the live cattle market. We traded Friday in the red. December lost $2.12, 183.70. Uh, same loss for February, dropping that contract to 185.30 and just 17 cents off the day's low. 
And for the feeders on Friday, 222 lower on the November, 245.42, January down 290. And the hog market after experiencing 18% gains year to date, giving back some of those on December, actually giving back some during the entire month, 80.42, down 77 on the December. Let's bring back in Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions. Have we maybe topped out on some of these? Well, you look at the cattle market and, you know, it's concerning what's happening from a fundamental standpoint. So we rallied up near some old resistance and have failed at that level and started pulling back. Now you look at, uh, you know, the packer margins deeply in the red, over $40 ahead, negative. Uh, cutout values are really struggling until they start cutting kills. Those margins will continue to struggle. Cutout values will probably continue to struggle, and that limits the amount that they'll pay for the cash markets. We saw about $3 lower in the Southern Plains last week. On a dress basis, a couple dollars softer in the North. Uh, so the cash market's looking weak, maybe steady at best this week, but probably going to see an, another softer type trade unless the futures market can really stage some sort of a, a rebound. But with the Packers uh, struggling in here, feedlots probably hedge. They're probably willing to take a, a dollar less and take off some of those hedges and, and uh, add that to their cash markets. The hog market is one that you know has had a big move higher but now is aligned with that lean hog index. It's also running into some weekly resistance. So we had a big down week last week. That market, I think, struggles at this area. And this is a place, if you're a producer, you want to look at doing some hedging, I think, in that market. All right. And that all comes is uh, we're watching what happens in China. New loans in China falling to a 15-year low. So definitely concerns across the pond. Hey, Brian, thanks for popping in today. We'll see you back here on Wednesday. Brian Hoops with Midwest Market Solutions.